Let me show you the lab. We often very intuitively feel what goes on in other people. So if you watch a James Bond movie, for instance, Dr. No, you don't need to think much about what goes on in the main character. You fear with him, you rejoice with him, you slip into his skin without any effort. Now, our entire societies would be impossible if we weren't able to understand other people so easily. Now, over the last decade, what we came to understand is that parts of the brain that are normally active when you do something yourself or feel an emotion come online again while you see the actions and emotions of others. Your brain makes you empathize with them. Now, the next big question is how the brain actually allows you to share the emotions of others. And that's the topic of this project. The areas involved in empathy are not just one, but many. And what I'm trying to understand is how all these areas communicate to each other. And to do that, we, I'm trying now actually to combine many different techniques in all the possible ways. So in the social brain lab, which I lead together with Valeria, we basically follow two main lines. We have a human line in which what we try to do is understand how the different brain regions involved talk to each other. So for that we use EEG, which has very high temporal resolution, to see how the activity goes from one brain region to the other in time. And then we also now use ultra-high field fMRI, which will become available here with the Spinoza Center, to really see in which layers of the cortex the activity is to map the inputs and the outputs. So from that, we'll get a real wiring diagram of empathy. Then the second theme is our animal work, where we use the fact that we found out that rats are actually empathic as well. They care about what goes on in other rats. So what we can do there is use methods that have a precision we could never get in humans. We can listen simultaneously to hundreds of neurons while the rat is empathic for another one. And we can as well manipulate activity in the rat's brain to see how that affects empathy. And by putting all of that together, for the first time, we'll get a real biology of how the brain is empathic. I'm a behavioral neuroscientist, and my passion is to use animal models of behavior to understand the neurobiology of empathy. Well, nowadays, most grants are just encouraging you to go to the next low-hanging fruit. You really get caught up in the routine. The RC is very different. You know that you're competing against the most innovative minds in Europe. It makes you pause. Together with Valeria, we really spend a good year just trying to identify what the most important question is for us in our field. And I think with this grant, we've really found that question. And that alone, just applying to the RC, makes you grow enormously on a scientific level. But once you get the grant, it's a true scientist's dream come true, because you now have money for five years to really concentrate on the single question you find most interesting. With my background in physics, I look for quantitative methods to infer information transfer between the nodes in the brain. So for us as a group, to be the 3,000th group to have received an ERC is extremely inspiring. For many, the European Union is still mainly an economic union. But I think the ERC shows that Europe has become the patron and the incubator of some of the most inspired signs in Europe. It shows us that Europe has become much more than an economic union. It's a true union of ideas. And that makes me proud to be European. So to make the project work, Valeria and I have really attracted some very good scientists with very diverse disciplines. Combining computer science and psychology, I like the challenge of applying high-tech methods to understand how our brains make us empathic. We put a lot of effort in the group in creating a bit of a family atmosphere where people no longer just care about their own success, 
really about the whole project.